Good morning. Today is <clears throat> the 19th day of February in this 2021st year of our Lord. Begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. During the season of Lent, uh, I would like to share with you from two books. One is of uh, daily devotions, which will be a scripture reading for each given day. They're somewhat, somewhat random, but they give us some thought to reflect upon. And the other is from a book that I found called No Wonder They Called Him the Savior by Max Lucado. And it's a journey toward the cross, uh, revealing the wonders of Christ through the cross and his passion. Um, I'd like to share first from a reading from Hebrews in the 12th chapter. <clears throat> Pardon me. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched, and that is burning with fire, to darkness, gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast, or to such a voice speaking words, so that those who, who heard it begged that no further words be spoken to them, because they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyous assembly, to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirits of righteous men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkling of blood that speaks better than words than the blood of Abel. See, it, see to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, how much less will we if we turn away from him who warns us from heaven? At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised once more I will shake not only the earth but also the heavens. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be be shaken. Let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. The first section of Max Lucado's book is entitled The Cross, Its Words, and the first chapter, Final Words, Final Acts. In a recent trip, to my hometown, I took some time to go see a tree, a live oak tree, my dad had called it, with the accent upon live. It was nothing more than a sapling, so thin I could wrap my hand around it and touch my middle finger to my thumb. The West Texas wind scattered the fall leaves, caused me to zip up my coat. There is nothing colder than a prairie wind, especially in a cemetery. A special tree, I said to myself, with a special job. I looked around. The cemetery was lined with elms, but not oaks. The ground was dotted with tombstones, but no trees. Just this one, a special tree, or a special man. About three years ago, Daddy began noticing a steady weakening of his muscles, it began in his hands, and then he felt it in his calves, and then his arms thinned a bit. He mentioned his condition to my brother-in-law, who is a physician. <clears throat> my brother-in-law, alarmed, sent him to a specialist. The specialist conducted lengthy battery of tests, blood, neurological, and muscular, and he reached this conclusion, Lou Gehrig's disease a devastating crippler. No one knows the cause of or its cure. The only sure thing is its cruelty and its accuracy. I looked down at the plot of ground, 
that would someday entomb my father. Daddy always wanted to be buried under an oak tree, and he bought this one. Special order from the valley, he had boasted. Had to get special permission from the city council to put it here. Well, that wasn't hard in this dusty oil field town where everybody knew everyone else. The lump got tighter in my throat. A lesser man might have been angry. Another man might have given up, but Daddy didn't. He knew that his days were numbered, so he began to get his house in order. The tree was only one of preparations that he made. He improved the house for Mom by installing a sprinkler system and a garage door opener and painting the trim. He got the, wall, the, the will updated. He verified the insurance and retirement ed, eh, policies. He bought some stock to go toward his grandchildren's education. He planned his funeral. He bought cemetery plots for himself and mom. He prepared his kids through words of assurance, letters of love, and last of all, he bought the tree, a live oak tree. Final act, final hours, final words. They reflected a life well lived. So do the last words of our master. When on the edge of death, Jesus too got his house in order. A final prayer of forgiveness. A plea honored. A request of love. A question of suffering. A confession of human humanity. A call of deliverance. And a cry of completion. Words of chance muttered by a desperate martyr? No. Words of intent painted by the divine deliverer on the canvas of sacrifice. Final words, final acts. Each one is a window through which the cross can be better understood. Each one opens a treasury of promise. So that's where you learned it, I said aloud as though speaking to my father. I smiled to myself and thought, it's much easier to die like Jesus if you have lived like him a lifetime. Final hours are passing now. The gentle flame on his candle grows weaker and weaker. He lies in peace, his body dying, his spirit living. No longer can he get out of bed. He has chosen to live his last days at home. It won't be long. Daddy's windy draft, death's windy draft will soon exhaust the flickering candle and it will be over. I look one last time at the slender oak. I touch it as if it had been hearing my thoughts. Grow, I whispered. Grow strong. Stand tall. Yours is a valued treasure. As I drove home through the raging, the ragged oil field patchwork. I kept thinking about that tree. Though feeble, the decades will find it strong. Though slender, the years will add thickness and strength. Its last years will be its best, just like my father's, just like my master's. It is much easier to die like Jesus if you have lived like him for a lifetime. Grow, young tree, my eyes were misting. Stand strong. Yours is a valued treasure. He was awake when I got home. I leaned over his bed. I checked on the tree, I told him. It's growing. And he smiled. Final words. Final acts. Each is a window through which one, uh, through which the cross can be better understood. Each opens a treasury of possibilities. Reflect on that one statement that jumped out at me, and I think it did at you. It's much easier to die like Jesus if you have lived like him for a lifetime. What does that look like for you? What would it look like to live like Jesus for a lifetime? You see... Each of us have been given by God a vessel. 
And some of us have chosen to fill that vessel with words of hope and possibility and promise. Our vessel of this life that bears us through this world is filled with the full measure overflowing of God's love for us. And it's filled up to full that it might overflow into the lives of those that we touch along the way. At the end of your life, at the end of mine, what will one who has observed our living reflect upon? What is it that we will leave behind? It is, a, is it a life that's lived like Jesus? We can figure that one out pretty simply by knowing the Gospels, by hearing the words of the great men of the Scripture, of Paul, of Peter, of John, that's li whose lives reflected to their very end what walking with Jesus looks like. So let that be a part of your meditation and reflection as we journey toward the cross and toward the tomb, which will stand empty and which will offer us hope and promise. Look and reflect upon the life that you are choosing to live each and every day and know that through God's love and forgiveness for us, today can be the first day of the rest of that life. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this vessel that bears us through the terrain of this world, our bodies, our souls, our being. You have blessed us abundantly with your grace and mercy. And you have done so for a good purpose, that that life might be a reflection of your Christ in the people that we meet, in the acts and the choices we make each day. Help us, O oh Lord, to be mindful of your ways as we plot the course of our own way each day. And may each day be a truer reflection of who you are to what people see in us. We live our witness through the actions that we make in accordance with the words that you have given us. Let us know and learn those words and take them to heart and try our best under the umbrella of your grace abundant to live as your Christ has lived. We pray this day, O Lord, for those who are caught in the midst of inclement weather, the weather of winter time, of ice and snow, of cold and rain, of flood waters that rise in rivers surrounding us. We pray your protection will be with each, that you would Send to them those angels of mercy that will give them help in their times of difficulty. And give us thankful hearts for the blessings that are in the midst of even our despair. The blessings of family and friends, the blessings of your love and forgiveness, the blessings of the life that we have until we breathe no more. Hear now our concerns that we lift up to you. For you call us to intercede for not only ourself, to be truer and better reflections of you, but to pray for those who have needs. Hear now our prayers in the silence of these moments. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I look outside today and we see gray skies, rain that <clears throat> is predicted throughout the day. It's winter time. It's what we would expect. We pray safety and comfort for those that are in colder weather than we are here. Protect them and help us to reach out as we are able to our neighbor in need. God's blessings for the journey of this day. Amen.